I am speaking with Tanya Davis, and you are one of the mothers or the midwives of the Magnolia Moonshot Bee. So, how did you get involved? What did you do to take your busy time and explore these weekly conversations with these other ideas? So, um, I, w I was invited to the Magnolia Moonshots by a friend. Um, someone that I deeply admire and she extended an opportunity for me to, to meet with other strong women uh, who want to make a bigger impact in the world, impact in the world for women. And I'm very much a believer of we attract our tribe. And I stayed because we all have the same desire to change the world. It was like a magnet. It's, it's like, a, uh, I don't know if you remember the Wonder Twins. And uh, yeah. one Wonder Twin would touch the other and they would say, Wonder Twins, activate! Form of a, a, a key lock! Shape of a key! And then they would come together. That's how it felt. It's like we all each have these individual power and we were all doing, doing our own thing and yet and still it seemed like there was more power available. And that's how it felt when I... Um, started participating with the magnolias yeah i that makes perfect sense to me i love your description so tanya you're a philanthropic soul and you created a, it's a purpose by design yes. which are I, I young women and giving them a sense of belonging um, yes. what led you to do that work um, reflecting back, it has uh, very much to do with how I was raised myself and um, raised in Shiloh. Uh, Shiloh is in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a community of blue collar workers who are, are, are simply trying to um, make sure our needs are met. At the time, it, was, it took a village. I lived next door to my grandmother. Um, my mom worked hard every single day. And seeing her work hard and seeing the struggles that we were having, I recognized that in other young women. And so I, am, I have had the privilege of, of walking in a great deal of privilege. And I wanted to be able to share that. The Magnolias call me the privilege smasher. That's who I am. And I wanted to make sure that everyone had the access to what I was having. And I was having so many aha moments, like, that's how you do that. Oh, that's how they got in the door. And so when I joined a board and was introduced to some young ladies, I remember looking down at a little girl and thinking, that's me. And I saw all these hopes and desires in her, and I wanted to show her how to reach her goals. And that's how it happened. So I think I, that you have a spirit. I won't go into detail on that, but I'm wondering how you bring in play in terms of the young women in teaching them about leadership. Where does playful come in? <laughs> um, playful comes, you know, it, I, you have to have playfulness to build trust with young women. You have to. So one of the things that we do, because our work is so intense when, we're, when we are there, um, one of the things we do is we have dance competition where we, you know, we take the time to dance. The ladies that have joined me on this journey, we make sure that we, we dance. We show them that we like to dance. We play around. They roll their eyes at us. Um, but we do a lot of fun things like that, especially looking crazy doing these dances that we have no desire how to do. Um, using slang words that we know sound absolutely ridiculous, but it makes them laugh and they understand that we're trying and they're like, just, just don't. And I'm like, but it's, it's, come on, come on, you know? So we do a lot, we do a lot of playful things with the girls. You know, I mean, there's so many interesting parts of you that I've learned about the, more, more than a year but you're you're an author and I'm wondering about how you think about terms of gathering people around the, the campfire or around the zoom machine here um, and what is it about stories that is transformational 
Oh, oh, now you hit a deep nerve. Stories, everyone has a story. And we need to, and we really need to learn to be active listeners in the stories of others. It's so important. If you, when you take the time to listen to someone's story, you become a witness bearer in their life. And stories connect us. I remember a lady who came to my camp and she said, I have nothing to give. And I said, are you serious? Are you, you have nothing to give? What about your story? Well, she didn't, she didn't want to share her story. She said, it it makes me too vulnerable. I can't do that. Well, stories build trust. And so when you're not willing to open up and share your story, especially with the work that I do, the girls automatically say they push back from you and when you do share your story which is another story in itself I had a young lady say one day I will come back to this place and share my story to help someone else so that's what stories do they bridge us and they help us we've all had disappointments we've all had frustrations whether you know our story might not be as grand as another is someone else's story but we all have the same common emotions. We get frustrated, we get angry. We need to share those with others. You had a challenge in life that could have broken you, but instead did make you stronger. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did. It, it made me stronger. It, I, I think there's something in a woman that you want to go search for the answers searching for the answers is so important and so and I, I i think i have a little bit more of that driving me where it's like okay there is more to this and i have to figure out what it is um and so i could i couldn't let them break me um i had to to get um the healing that i needed in areas where i needed it so that i could keep moving on and, and figuring out the process Three divides in our world today. Uh, Now more than um, can you say a little bit about the three divides in terms of what it means to you and 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 if one is is tugging at your heart more than the others? So we know that the three divides are uh, uh, the ecological, the social, and the spiritual. and there's, there's a division between the three where there should not be um, because they all intersect one another. And how we got to this place where they're divided is beyond me. I will confess to you that as the result of the Magnolias, I have learned more than um, that I could have possibly thought I would learn. Um, it's, it's amazing how you, you see things and you get these little checks in your spirit, but you don't understand why they are all there. And the Magnolias, through Roberta, who's in ecologic, uh, ecological, and then we have our spiritual, which most all of us in the group are, and then the social. I understand now that those three need to be bridged together. I fall more into the social because, like they, like I said, they call me the privilege smasher. I need to make sure everyone has access to resources. Everyone should have access to resources. Um, I I am the one who feels like, you know, I want people to take the vanity out of their their volunteering and get into the dirt, get into the knit grit grit of the work that needs to be done. Um, There is one particular individual um, that I've met along the way who, who, who we've helped, who said, hey, Miss Tanya, people would come and get me and take me to the baseball game or take me to get clothes. And then they would take me back to the projects and drop me off and leave me on the curb. And I would literally be standing there in my mind thinking, that was so nice, but how do I get out of here? I don't know how to get out of here. And so... Um, we we need to learn to bridge the three in terms of climate. I have come to understand. Um, well, I always knew that that the least of these would be impacted by the climate. I understood that. I, yeah, the most vulnerable are the ones that are in, impacted the most by by the climate. So, 
Roberta will teach me how to take that to my community and show me how to use that so that we can move forward and move out of our situations. Each of us carries information that we need to show the other how to use. I think that's why we complement each other so much. Um, when I hear the Magnolias talk, I'm literally sitting there like, oh, I have someone who needs to hear that, you know? So I think it. I think it's opening the doors for all of us to, to empower other women. Well, I Tanya, that you would say in terms of inviting into the Magnolia, um, what's the invitation um, that you would want to send out to other women? The invitation I would send out to other women is to remember empowered women empower women. That's what we do. Empowered women empower women. I always, and I always say, if you come to the Magnolias, be ready to be yourself. I love it. And there's a lot of love also. And there is so much love. Yeah. We, we tend to come from a place of love and are not afraid of our vulnerability. Exactly. And it takes a lot to, to do that. But I have come to understand that by simply being yourself, you become more than yourself. And they, that is what has happened being around the Magnolias. And as you say, we hold up half the sky. We hold up half the sky. <laughs> yes.